Hey friend, Heather Creekmore here. I'm glad you're listening to the Compared to Who show. Today we're in a series all month of October long about letting go. We've talked about letting go of our need to be right. We've talked about letting go of people pleasing. We've talked about letting go of the world's definition of beauty. Today we're going to talk about letting go of that too small size dress that's hanging in the back of your closet or those two small size jeans that are stuffed in the back of your drawer. Friends, we've been here before, but I think we need to go there again. Let's talk about letting go of clothes that don't fit and why we hang on to them anyway. I don't know. I do it too. So don't feel bad. Anyway, that's where we're going today. I'm glad you're listening. Hey, if this episode touches you, tell a friend about it. Share it with a friend. And hey, leave me a review. That's one of the nicest things you can do if this show has been a blessing to you is leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Okay, here we go. It's going to be a fun one today. Let's go. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Okay, so cleaning out your closet and your drawers, letting go of things that don't fit you anymore. Yikes, no one likes to do this, okay? There's a real struggle mentally, and maybe physically too, if you've got a lot of clothes and it's heavy to carry or something, but mentally and emotionally, there is a struggle with letting go of clothes that don't fit, especially if you're someone who has wrestled dieting, eating disorder, disordered eating kind of things. There is this very deeply held belief or hope or wish that if those clothes don't fit now, someday they will fit again. Someday we'll get back to that. Someday I'll be able to wear that size. So I just need to hold on to them just in case. And friend, if that's what you're feeling today, I hear you and I understand you. And I do not want to recommend anything rash and uncomfortable in this scenario for you, okay? I want to take this in baby steps. I want to approach this gently. But I want to start by letting you know that seeing these clothes that don't fit you every time you go into your closet or every time you open that drawer, maybe your drawers like mine are a little jammed, packed with stuff. When you can't open that drawer and what's keeping it from opening is those jeans that are too small for you to get on this year. Friends, that's not helping your body image. That's not helping you emotionally or mentally. Those numbers on those size tags, those items of clothing can be a stronghold in your life that's keeping you attached to this other vision, this maybe ideal image or this um, make-believe, I hope someday image, or even holding on to the past, this is who I used to be, maybe I'll get there again, I hope I'll get there again. It's keeping you in a place that is not reality. (laughs) It's not the real you today. The real you today doesn't fit in those clothes. And the real you today may feel healthier about her body, may be feeling even a little lighter or more encouraged about her body size if she doesn't have to constantly stare at those wrong size clothes. So friend, here's where I think you need to start. I think you just need to start by sitting, taking a moment and honestly saying, 
why am I holding on to these clothes? Why do I still have them? Now, I know your first response is going to be, well, what if I do change sizes again? It would be irresponsible for me to get rid of all those clothes only to have my size change again. And then I have to spend all that money to get new clothes. And I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I just want to make sure you're not fooling yourself, okay? Because I think it's ourselves that we most often like to fool or we try to talk ourselves into things, riddle around things. Okay, so even if even if that's really where you're going to you're going to put your case there, right? I can't get rid of these clothes because I may need them someday. Here's what I think you need to do. I think you need to go get one of those big old rubber made bins and I think you need to honestly assess every article of clothing, right? Because I think even if you did change to the size that those clothes are, I think there are probably still some things that you wouldn't wear anymore. Now, I don't know about you, but I am getting close to 50 years old. And when I stopped and looked through my closet and realized I had things in there that I wore in my 30s, I was like, you know what? I can't dress like I did in my 30s now that I am closer to 50 than I am to 35, right? Things just don't fit in the same way anymore. My body is not the same in any way, shape, or form. It's everything has changed and shifted. And even if I was the exact same size and weight, things would still not look the same as they did on me back then. So first do an honest assessment. Okay. It, it, would this even look right? Or maybe it's even the wrong era, right? Like things I wore in my 30s, well, maybe they're not in style anymore. Or maybe I just wouldn't wear something like that anymore because I don't wear things that look <laughs> like they came from the juniors department anymore now that I'm close to 50. So so first go through every item and put it up against that standard. Would I wear this again? And then if it's something pretty basic, you know, a pair of jeans or maybe a simple dress and you think I would wear this again, then put it in that Rubbermaid bin and I want you to put it in your garage or your attic or if you live a place. We don't have basements here in Texas, but I grew up with a basement. Everything went to the basement. I grew up on the East Coast. We had a big basement and held it all. Put it in the basement. But put it somewhere where you don't have to see it every single day. Because my friend, I think it's causing you shame. And that shame is not going to help you get free from your body image issues. And more so... Shame's not from the Lord. God is not mad at you because those clothes don't fit you anymore. Someone needs to rewind and listen to that word again. God's not upset with you that those clothes don't fit. Bodies change. Bodies are not made of plastic. (laughs) You know, plastic never changes, right? Like you have to work really hard to crush like a red Solo cup. But our bodies are not polymers, (laughs) They're not plastic. They change constantly. In fact, I don't know about you, but I've found now like sometimes within the course of a month, my size and shape feels like it changes dramatically. Like There are certain times of the month when I look down at my legs and I'm like, I think they're twice the size they were two weeks ago. And then they kind of change back. Our bodies are always changing. You haven't done anything wrong because your body has changed. Give yourself grace to be human. Give yourself grace to age and to change. You know, I've been researching menopause and perimenopause lately because of this book I've written on aging. It comes out in July, so I'm excited for y'all to get that. It's a devotional. But as I've been researching aging and menopause and perimenopause, and Also, because of my age, I'm getting all these Instagram and Facebook ads about aging and menopause and perimenopause. And what I'm noticing is the message from the advertisements is stop, like stop aging, don't gain weight like everyone else does. You know, you can do something to make sure that you don't fall prey to the evil perimenopause or evil aging. But friends, and I'm doing this research, and I'm like, oh, your body naturally like gains a little weight when you go through menopause, and then it'll naturally take it off as you get further on the other side. Like These are just natural things our body does to protect us, because our body's job is to keep us alive. Like, thank you, body, <laughs> for doing that, right? And, and we're fighting them as if they're evil. Friends, it, it's, nothing is wrong with you because you've changed sizes, 
It's okay. So get the shame out of your closet. The second thing I want to ask you is what does it benefit you to wear or I don't know, to try to wear <laughs> or try on, right? We've all been through that morning try on where you put on the three different things and none of them fits and then you just, that ruins your whole day, right? What benefit does it do you to keep things that don't fit well, right? It, it's just an exercise in frustration. It induces anxiety in the morning. What am I going to put on? And then you go and you're like, will it fit? Will it fit? Oh, it won't fit. And then you're discouraged and you're frustrated and you're thinking about your body all day long because of that trying on clothes experience you had in your closet that morning. Friend, it's okay to buy clothes that fit, even if you don't like the number that's on the size tag. You deserve to wear clothes that fit your body. Clothes sizes were made so you could find the size that fits your body, not the other way around. It wasn't that your body needs to fit the clothes size. Friends, there's no shame in choosing clothing, no matter what number is on the tag, that fits you. And what I found is when I wear things that don't really fit, it cuts off my circulation around my stomach. I think about my body the whole time I'm wearing it. I'm uncomfortable. I'm constantly like picking at it or pushing it out so I can breathe for a second or fiddling with something, right? It, it really is a distraction from my day. Whereas when I wear something that fits well, and is comfortable, I can go through the day without carrying that extra burden of stressing about my body all day long. And you know, when I wear something comfortable, I'm actually freer to not think about what my body even looks like. But when I wear something uncomfortable, I am constantly wondering if everyone else can see how tight I think it feels. The other thing I recognized, and this may be because I wore some pants that were too tight the other day and learned this lesson again, maybe so I could share it with you today. The other thing I realized is if I'm wearing pants, especially that are too tight, I can't feel whether or not I am hungry or full. My stomach just hurts and not being able to feel hunger or fullness makes my eating while I'm wearing those pants wonky. I'm eating without feeling it <laughs> and I don't even recognize like how much I've eaten or if I've eaten enough. And what I recognized was when I got those pants off, I was ravenously hungry and that wasn't a healthy place to be in, right? I would have been better if I had just worn something comfortable and could have eaten regularly all day long instead of wearing something too tight and getting home and being ravenously hungry because my stomach was too constricted to tell me it was hungry all day. Friends, it's okay to wear comfortable clothes. It's okay to get things that feel comfortable to wear no matter what size number they are. I think I've said that enough, but just saying it again for those of you in the back. There's one more angle to, to all of this that we have to explore if we're going to really consider why it's so hard to let go of these clothes. And I did a whole episode on this a few years ago with my friend Dana White from A Slob Comes Clean. She's got this incredible business and she writes books, Christian books, on how to help you organize and declutter and those kind of things. She's awesome. I love Dana. But when I had her on the show and we talked about this topic, she said that she believes one reason why we women have such a difficult time getting rid of these old clothes is grief. And I thought that was fascinating. Grief most of us don't think about grief as having anything to do with why we don't clean out our closets. But Dana explained how for some of us, it's grieving the season of life, right? Like I know I held on to my business suits probably for 15 years after I no longer ever needed to wear a suit again. And I told myself I was holding on to it just in case I had like a conference or a special occasion that I needed a suit for. But I think Dana was spun on. I just hadn't fully been able to process that that part of my life was over, 
that that wasn't me anymore, that that old me in some ways was, was dead, it was gone, that my new life didn't include business suits. And so the grieving process is really a process whereby we say goodbye to things. We, we really face closure. We say, that's not the season I'm in anymore. That's not my life anymore. And so maybe it's doing like I did, having to acknowledge that you've gone from the life of a working woman to maybe the life of a, a stay-at-home mom. Or maybe it's the life of a working woman woman to the life of a retiree. I know I was just having a conversation with my mother-in-law recently about getting rid of her suits because she's like, I don't need these anymore. I'm never going back to work. And I was like, you're right. Let's, <laughs> let's donate them somewhere. Let's find someone who could use them. What do you need to grieve? Maybe it's not grieving a season of life. Maybe it's grieving aging. Maybe it's coming to grips with the fact that you're not going to go back to being 25 ever again. We'll talk more about grief right after this message. Hey there, friend. Did you know that I do coaching? If you've ever listened to the show and thought, hey, I just love to have a conversation with Heather. I think that would be really helpful. Maybe she could help me sort out why I'm stuck. Guess what? I do that. And I would love to do that for you. So no matter if your struggle seems eh, light, not that big of a deal, or if you've been struggling for a really long time and you're just overwhelmed, let's talk. You can grab a free 10 minute, just like learn about coaching session on my website. Or if you're ready, you feel like you know me well enough from the show, just dig in, schedule, grab a time and let's have a conversation. You can go to compare to who.me, find the coaching tab, and you'll find all the ways to connect there. There's one last way that we may need to grieve, and that's grieving our old bodies, right? Maybe yours doesn't have anything to do with aging. Maybe it's just that your body size has changed. Friends, we've just lived through a pandemic. And I know there's been lots of talk about, you know, the weight people gained during the pandemic, and that's been attributed to, you know, what they ate during the pandemic. But, but friends, I think as a culture, maybe global culture, we've experienced stress and trauma through this, and that has caused our bodies to change and adapt, right? Again, this is what our bodies are for, right? Thank you, bodies, for helping us stay alive, right? So, so your body may have changed, Maybe it was even before 2020, or maybe it's been since 2020, 21. But friend, if you don't have the same body that you had before, it's a different size, you're a different weight, I want you to hear today that that's not a reason to feel shame, right? Bodies change. It's okay. And so if you're holding on to those clothes, because you haven't been able to grieve, or let me maybe put this in some other ways, words, you haven't been able to face the fact that your body has truly changed. And I want to encourage you today. It's okay. Look in the mirror. Be honest with yourself. And look in the mirror to shame yourself. I mean, don't misunderstand me there. But be honest with yourself about the fact that you don't have the same body size that you had before, that your body is different, but your body was still made by God. Your body is still a good body in his eyes, no matter what culture tells you. And your body still deserves to wear clothes that fit and are comfortable for you in the size you wear right now. I did an episode a while back. Um, it was a kind of retelling of a Tim Keller sermon that he did on how sin makes us addicts. And it was, there's an aspect to it about shame. And Keller makes this point that we believe we can shame ourselves into changing, right? But it doesn't work. Instead, when you feel shame, you just hide. And oftentimes you do the opposite of what that shaming voice is telling you to do because you just want to escape it. So friends, shaming yourself for not being the same size is not a good 
health, quote unquote, health in quotes, motivator to get back to that size. The shame is not helping you. So friend, get some clothes that fit. It's okay. Let go of those clothes that don't fit you anymore, that don't fit your body right now. If you're working on adding more healthy habits, if you're hoping that your body size will change and get smaller again, I'm not going to tell you that's bad or that's wrong. But on your way there, you deserve to wear clothes that are comfortable and that fit you. And again, you don't have to go spend a million dollars and buy designer things. Just go grab a couple things at TJ Maxx or Ross or wherever you like to shop. Grab a couple things that fit, that you feel good in. And I promise you, it will make such a difference even as you pursue health habits related to exercise or food or any of those things, even socially healthy habits, right? We don't want to go places we don't have anything to wear. So go make sure you have something to wear so you can go out with friends. So you can go to that ladies night at church and feel comfortable because those things are really healthy for you too. Friend, what do you need to let go of in your closet? What haven't you grieved yet? Why are you letting shame take control or even take the lead in your journey to get healthier? Because it's a bad driver. (laughs) Kick it out. Get a new Uber, right? Instead, think about what God would say to you. If Jesus is standing right next to you as you're trying to get dressed in the morning, just picture this scenario, okay? Like, I mean, awkwardness of Jesus watching you getting dressed aside. Like, that's not what I mean at all. (laughs) But I just mean, hear his comfort beside you as you try on those jeans and you can't get them buttoned. Hear him say, your value is not in wearing that size jeans, Hear him say as you try to put on that top that you still love wearing, it just doesn't fit right anymore. Hear him saying, my daughter, I love you. You don't have to fit in these old clothes. You don't have to fit into this model you've made of yourself and who you should be. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. I'm not asking you to fit a certain size or to wear a certain size clothing or to wear clothing that you wore a decade ago. I'm asking you to be a light and an ambassador for me. And you can do that wearing new clothing. You can do that wearing larger size clothing. So my friend, I hope something today has encouraged you to be set free from those clothes in your closet that might be causing you shame. Let go of them. Just let go. If you can't fully let go, if you can't donate them, if you can't get rid of them, just put them in a Rubbermaid bin, but get them out of your sight. Get them out of your bedroom. Don't let those clothes call out to you with their shaming voices anymore. I hope something in today's message has encouraged you. And more so, I hope something has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye. Before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor? Leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free.
Hey, have you found the Edify podcast app yet? It's a great place for lots of great Christian shows. Download the app wherever you get your apps.